Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another StarCraft 2 amateur cast. My name is Copo and today we're going to be watching a TVP between Resivirus, our blue Terran up in the top left hand corner, and Downey, the purple Protoss in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, map today is Backwater Gulch. I'm sure you guys might not be as familiar with it as you could be. Uh, it is a part of the technical official lap, uh, ladder map pool. But, uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be as well known as a lot of the other maps and that's mainly because it's not used uh, not used very often in competitive play. Uh, it's one of these maps that just doesn't seem to lend itself well to the whole GSL, MLG, uh, Dreamhack idea for some reason. Uh, one of these reasons, which, which I can figure out, is that uh, a lot of maps these days that Blizzard is making or that uh, custom map makers are making have what's called uh, rotational symmetry, which means that, you know, as you, there's, the map technically is symmetrical, but it's only symmetrical in kind of a rotational direction. Uh, this map actually is perfectly symmetrical if you look at it. Uh, I mean, that uh, basically means that if you're in cross positions like these guys are, uh, no matter which way you're expanding, you're always expanding towards your opponent. Uh, it's one of those things about rotational symmetry that uh, makes uh, makes some of the matchups a little bit more dynamic and where you can expand and uh, certain things like that. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, guys, but that's just my understanding of how rotational symmetry works in, uh, in map making. So feel free to rip that apart if you disagree. So uh, TVP on this map. Uh, I don't know a ton about this map because, like I said, I'm probably a lot like you guys and don't have a great idea of how this map plays, uh, mainly due to its uh, infrequency and how often it pops up. But uh, I guess we're going we're gonna to learn together exactly how well this one goes. Uh, this is a gold level match, so I'm sticking with the trend of doing low level casts. I hope you guys are, are liking that idea. I'm going to try and, uh, if anybody has any ideas on how we can maybe improve the exposure of this channel and get uh, more people to send in some replays for us. Uh, you know, just kind of get the word out there that we're doing something like this. Uh, please feel free to let me know in the comments or send us an email. Uh, send in replays to the email as well if anybody wants something casted by us. Uh, looks like we have a little bit of friendly banter going on between some observers, so I'm assuming this probably isn't a ladder match. Uh, negating everything I said about this being part of the ladder pool. Uh, obviously this isn't even a ladder match, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, standard stuff so far, we're not seeing anything too tricky, we're not seeing anything too out of the ordinary, pretty much standard play. Uh, one gas up for the Terran and a barracks going down, orbital command. Do uh, we have an orbital command? We do have an orbital command, perfect. And uh, one gas, or two gas, sorry. The second gas is just coming up now. One gate, cyber. Expect that warp gate to be started fairly soon. Uh, there we go. Look at that. As I hover my mouse over it, it just basically happens to start. Funny how that, uh, how that timing works so well. Maybe I'm just good at this. What can I say? So we do see uh, just a one barracks. Going right into factory opening for the Terran, dropping a second gas. So we're going to see a little bit of tech out of the Terran. Uh, teching, against, uh, teching against Protoss as Terran is not necessarily a bad idea. I mean, technically anything's viable in this game. That's what makes the game so interesting to watch. I mean, anything can technically work. A player can, uh, can turtle on two bases and mass void rays, and technically they can still win as long as their opponent does inadequate scouting and uh, isn't quite ready for what's coming at them. So we're going to see... Uh, we're seeing something... A little bit different against Protoss as a Terran here. I mean, the factory's coming up. I don't see a starport yet. Uh, the only thing I can maybe think of is this might be a fast Banshee rush or maybe a fast rush to Metabax. Normally I see a factory out this quick with two gases, so we usually see Banshee rush out of that. Uh, definitely a good way to work your line harass, especially if uh, you get Cloak and the Terran, or sorry, if the Terran gets Cloak and the Protoss doesn't have a Robo, it's basically GG there because they have no way to get detection to see those Banshees. And those Banshees can basically just go to town and everything, including any uh, robotics facility you might try and make in response to those Banshees. You do see a starport coming up now and a tech lab being built on the factory. Uh, possibly supporting my Banshee hypothesis. If you swap these over you can start making Banshees and Cloak right away. Warp gate's almost finished with the Protoss here though. We only see two gates down. Uh, no, Robo being dropped actually. So if I am correct in my Banshee assumption then actually this Protoss may be well prepared for it. Let's see actually. We'll see exactly what he knows. Uh, no, don't want to go to that. He actually hasn't scouted the inside of Terran space at all, so Terran did a good job of walling this up. Uh, but yeah, the robo facility's down just maybe as a safe thing. Colonel boosting out an observer just to double check. Maybe not Colonel boosting that out, maybe I was wrong about that. But uh, definitely getting the fast observer out because he wasn't able to do any scouting. So if he wants to try and find out what the Terran is up to, getting that fast robo and uh, skipping a little bit on the gates is an easy way to get the fast observer out and uh, and try to determine exactly what your opponent is doing so you can react accordingly. 
But we do see uh, that tech lab did get switched over, and we do see a banishing beam made, but it doesn't look like we're seeing any cloak research, so maybe those observers weren't as crucial as uh, as they could have been if the cloak was going down. If the cloak had been uh, researched and invested in, and then a couple of banshees had come over, but there's an observer here, uh, that's a lot of wasted money for the Terran. Unfortunately, it wouldn't have done him any favors to basically have those banshees turned away because he made a huge initial investment in them. But we're not seeing that. That's all hypothetical. We're just seeing a couple of banshees being made, no cloak, uh, a little bit of harass. They can still do a very good job, even if uh, they're not cloaked and they're not spotted. Um, I mean, they can still get a couple of probe kills each and almost pay for themselves in that manner. We do see a fast uh, level 1 armor upgrade for the, for the Protoss coming down here. Still only two gateways, no sign of an expansion yet. Which is actually what I was waiting for. Normally if you don't go for heavy gateways off the of start, like if, I expect him to either add one more gateway somewhere in here or drop the Nexus. Uh, so if he drops the Nexus, the SCV here is going to be very uh, very aware of that, unless the Stalker just picks him off and then walks right back up the ramp. Alright, well never mind, I forget I said that. This probe down here will be very aware of any expansion that comes down, unless of course the same thing happens where the Terran moves one Marine out and decides to snipe off that probe. So we see the Robo still up. Uh, no Immortals have been made yet. Uh, of course, I'm going to lie. There's one Immortal there that's being made, but no more are being currently produced. Uh, still waiting for maybe a, another gateway or definitely an expansion. The minerals are getting a little bit high. Uh, again, this is just Gold League play, guys. Uh, personally, this is higher, not really higher level than what I play at, but this is about the same level that I play at. It's just a lot easier to sit back here and critique what they're doing than it is to actually do it myself, and I'm fully aware of that. So uh, I'm not really bragging on these guys saying that they're you know should have dropped an expo here should have dropped a third gateway i'm just saying you know that ideally in a perfect world if you could think of these things as it were happening uh that might have been the better idea we do see uh, these two banshees sitting off here in the corner and we do see a little bit of a marine tank composition down here uh, observers fully aware of what's going on here that observer is actually paid for itself immensely uh given t given the protoss great scouting information on what's to come here see the protoss army moving down the ramp maybe preparing to drop that expo I keep hoping he's going to drop that expo, but you know what? He played this game and I didn't, so really, uh, whatever he does is fine by me. We're just going to see how this plays out. Two Banshees coming around the back. Uh, hopefully into that mineral line to see a bit of harass there. We just see the expansion being dropped by the Terran in his base. I mean, he can just lift it down and fly to the natural, which isn't very far away at all, but the Observer will be fully aware of that. And two Banshees coming over. They've been spotted by the Protoss army. They have now been spotted by the Protoss army just as he goes to drop that Nexus. And the Stalkers are going to move out to intercept, but the Banshees are going to micro away and sneak around behind to get to the mineral line. But the Stalkers are going to try and cut them off, do a little bit of damage, uh, doing a little bit of damage there. But we don't see any cloak down for these Banshees, so they're just going to get ripped a little bit apart. And uh, one Banshee went down without actually getting any kills, and this cannon back here will prevent any uh, successful harass by that Banshee. It's just going to have to return home. Not a whole lot it can do when there's a cannon and Stalkers that are fully aware of what, uh, what the Terran's secret intentions are. So we see tanks are sieged up in the front here, and his army's, uh, his army's looking pretty formidable here, but it's not looking very uh, mobile. Tanks, the one thing tanks do to a Terran army, besides provide a lot of firepower, is they make it very immobile. You can have Marine tank as a good, decent army composition, but Marines have to be careful not to run ahead of the tanks, otherwise the tanks can be picked off. And uh, you basically combine in the most mobile unit of the Terran army with the least mobile, and that uh, can be a problem if you're not careful with how you micro your army. Some observer's still just hanging out right here. I'd really love to see a scan go down if you could see that little shimmer. Just to get rid of that observer, maybe a missile turret. Uh, missile turret going down somewhere. No, nope. must have just been dreaming about that one. Well, I'd like to see a missile turret come out sometime. Just to, It really keeps a, a close eye on those observers. Really what it does is it limits where the observer can go. So if you drop a couple of missile turrets in your base, I mean, they're never a bad idea to have for detection anyways. But what it does, it does definitely eliminates the uh, scouting potential of those observers. This Banshee tried to cut back in here and was chased away by three Stalkers. Scan goes down because the Banshee was unable to get any scouting information. And he sees the army compositions, basically Immortal, Zealot, Stalker. Another Scan goes down to see the facilities. He'll see a Twilight Council going down. He'll probably assume Blink or Charge. I'm not thinking he'd assume DTs at this point. He does have two Orbital Commands up. And he has an Engineering Bay down just in case he needs uh, any sort of detection out if DTs were to be a problem. But I guess we'll see what the Protoss' tech choice is from that. Could be Charge Blink or DTs, could also be High Templar actually if he's really getting creative and we do see Charge being researched there. Charge very good against uh, against Terran to take down those tanks. It uh, eliminates basically the, the time that it takes the Zealot to rush into the army, thereby allowing the Zealot to do a hell of a lot more damage than it normally would. Oh, see a medevac loading up here, but the Observer is fully aware of anything that's going to be going on again. 
So if this medevac is going to try to sneak around for a drop, the Protoss should already be prepared for this. I'm surprised the cannon hasn't dropped a cannon back around here just to be safe, but obviously he feels that Banshees and, and drops are something he can handle accordingly without too much static defense. Two more gateways being dropped down here. Charge still being researched, but we haven't seen any tech path gone up thanks to that Twilight Council, which is just perfectly fine. Uh, we do see, what do we see? We do see 1-1 one, one upgrades for the Protoss. Uh, one attack, one armor, no shield upgrade yet. Obviously shield being less important than the other two. This drop actually could find its way around the back with the Protoss unprepared if he's not careful, even though we did see it leave with that observer. Uh, hopefully he's got some warpins left. We see the Colonel boosting the charge out. Trying to make sure he's fully uh, fully ready to engage any Terran army push, but he's not ready to fully engage this drop. As long as the Terran can stay away from that cannon, uh, he might actually be able to do a little bit of damage here. If he can take all that Twilight Council. No, he's not going to focus the Twilight Council. He's going to focus the probes instead. Uh, trying to do a little bit of mineral line harass, and this cannon is actually going to eat through. Both these cannons just going to eat through that uh, that drop. And some reinforcements come in to try and take out this medevac, and it's actually going to fall. That is a huge loss for the Terran at this point in the game. He is still ahead in supply, but that medevac filled with Marines was actually a, an unfortunate thing to lose in that situation for the Terran player. Uh, trying to see, looks like one of the observers is getting a little bit mad here. Hotkey or stuff. Uh, Terran's got some of his stuff hotkeyed. Protoss has hardly anything hotkeyed. Uh, that is unfortunate. Now, well, you can technically play without hotkeys, guys. You can actually play at this level just fine without hotkeys, although they do help a little bit in micro in your army and such. Uh, so we see two bases apiece still. Uh, Terran really has gone up every tech path and then some. We see a third base being dropped there as soon as I say that. But he's got a factory with tech labs pumping out tanks. He's got a star port with a tech lab that's actually just pumping out single medevacs by the looks of it, although not building anything right now. And he's only committed to three barracks on two base. So he is... Or, crap. Four barracks on two base. So actually he's got a decent amount of production facilities for the two bases and the Protoss is seemed to be floating a lot of money. Uh, you could really stand to maybe build another forge uh, maybe get some more upgrades a little bit faster. Maybe start building some out of those Robo, maybe some more Immortals. Maybe a Warp Prism to do a little bit of creative for us. But we do see a Templar Archives going down here, so we're going to see uh, some High Templar play. High Templar is obviously very good against any sort of Bio Terran, but this Terran is not going incredibly heavy into Bio. Uh, investing an equal amount in Marines as he seems to be in tanks, which is uh, leading to a fairly high tank count at the front there. Obviously a very hard wall to break into. And the third base will help him drop some more production facilities and hopefully... Uh, be able to max out a supply and then uh, remax if his uh, army confrontation fails in the Terran's favor. Fails in the Terran's favor. Uh, combination between falls in the Terran's favor and fails for the Terran, I guess. Uh, if the push for the Terran fails, he'll be able to remax faster if he's on three bases and has the production facilities accordingly. Oh boy, that's a couple failed sentences there, guys, but please forgive me. Uh, we see these gateways being dropped here, not yet turned into warp gates. Hopefully, we see that rectified pretty soon. Side storm being researched by the Protoss, and his army's moving down here to destroy these rocks and take a third base for himself, not far behind the Terran, uh, but far enough behind to make it uh, maybe at least something important enough to note. Both players floating a fair amount of minerals, but we haven't seen really any confrontation. They're both just kind of starting to mass up an army here. Uh, kind of makes me wonder. It's really hard to tell at this point. I mean, Terran is a huge supply lead right now, mainly because the Protoss has been floating so much money all game. He doesn't have the protection facilities to keep up. But... Uh, even though the supply difference, it's really hard to tell who's going to win this confrontation when it does eventually come. Protoss trying to double expand and take a fourth base here. I actually like that play if you're floating lots of money. Uh, as I said in one of my previous casts, if you're floating lots of money, the best idea is to go and make another money producing structure, in this case a nexus. Uh, it drops 400 minerals right away, but it allows you to have more sustainable income in the future. These high templar should have. Sidestorm is now officially finished researching, so they should hopefully have enough energy by the time they reach an engagement. To, uh, to use those side storms, but here comes the Terran army. There's a lot of Marines in there, a lot of tanks. If you can catch those tanks on siege, that's a huge win for the Protoss. They should be able to rip through these armies, this army with these Immortals, and these side storms, if you can land them properly, will decimate the Marines. Uh, Immortals definitely the hard counter to tanks, and uh, side storm definitely the hard counter to everything masked by Terran, including Bio. Uh, FPS problems, hopefully those aren't too much of a problem. Uh, we're just going to see the Protoss still moving his army down. The tanks are sieged up. Can they blast away at this from afar? No, they cannot. The Protoss keeps his army out of range uh, while letting these two expansions stay up. This is actually a very tense moment here. Protoss doesn't want to move forward into the tank line because we all know how that turns out for any race facing tanks. But Terran's more than willing to move up and give himself a little bit of vision to blast away these stalkers. Stalkers don't move in there. That lost a couple of stalkers needlessly, but that's okay. He just has to find a very, it's a very tricky situation for the Protoss here. He's cut out of position. If he can land some side storms, that's basically the only thing he can hope to do. Land some side storms to get those immortals in the front. There's one side storm going down. 
Uh, definitely was a lot of damage to those Marines. That was uh, actually a very, very good storm to land. And he still hopefully got some more in reserve there. Stalker's retreating down the ramp along the side, trying to uh, join up the rest of their forces. And here comes a Marine ball again, bunched together. And there's another big storm going down, killing a lot of Marines in that. Uh, if he keeps these Marines bunched together like this, they're actually basically just storm fodder. Uh, he, I really have to see those split. We see a point defense drone being dropped here. This will take off a lot of the Stalker shots that can be used against his Banshee, yeah, this Medivac, or the Raven. Tanks on siege now, sieging back up. Uh, Protoss had a chance there to maybe uh, move into that tank line, but he missed his chance. And this point defense drone is still has a lot of time left, and that'll negate most of the Stalker's uh, shots. Which is unfortunate for uh, for the Protoss, especially because he's caught out of position. The Terran's actually closer to his main base than he is right now. So the supply counts have evened a little bit more since last time I mentioned it. They're only 20 supply apart. So if Protoss can engage properly here, he can, uh, can severely hamper the way the Terran can reinforce his army because tanks are slow to reinforce. And there's another huge, two huge storms going down in the uh, Marine Army. And these tanks didn't do the damage they needed to. And those were huge, huge storms. And now these tanks are blasting away because the Protoss is a little bit uh, mismarked with his army there. And we see all oh, huge, huge, huge storms going down there, decimating everything that was in that uh, Terran army. Oh, that was that really hurts. So I just got to find a way to directly encounter these tanks, and that is not the way you want to do those tanks. But he got blink when I wasn't paying attention, apparently. And a couple storms in those tanks, these immortals are just going to go to town. Immortals do horrendous damage to tanks, while tanks do almost nothing to immortals. So this will be mopped up very, very nicely by the Protoss. I am very impressed with that play. See two archons being formed here out of Templar that are out of energy. And the Terran's got to retreat and lick his wounds from that one. Uh, he did a lot of things right in that confrontation, but those storms, uh, if you're going to group your Marines up together like that, those storms can absolutely slaughter any infantry you might have. Oh, uh, both players let their macro slip a little bit during that engagement, but I can't blame them. It was a really tense micro situation. Uh, we just see the Protoss moving in a little bit more into position here, hopefully going for a quick counterattack, seeing as the Terran is very little. He's actually in the middle of mass production facility building to try and uh, keep up with his minerals. Protoss may be sneaking around to this back door, although his tank can fire from afar because it does have vision and range to go down there. Yep, just going to attack these back rocks, all these barracks building here will hopefully, hopefully uh, help to choke those units into a certain area that will allow these tanks to do mad splash damage. One zealot charges up to the barracks to see, uh, get a little bit of vision up there, but this Protoss army is going to have to retreat. This is not a good spot for it to engage in, and one High Templar misclicked obviously up there. Maybe not misclicked, obviously, because he did manage to get a storm off on these units, but they'll be healed quickly by those medevacs. And the Protoss will have to retreat on this counterattack as well. See more gateways being dropped by the Protoss. And uh, both players have definitely let their money climb a little bit too high. Uh, Protoss is a base up, but he's only really mining from three bases. Actually, he's only really mining from two bases, because his main's all mined out, as is the Terran's main, so they're actually both mining from, uh, give or take, two bases. Third of the Terran being very, very, very well saturated, as is the uh, natural. Do them well to maybe drop another one or two bases off in this corner over here. Didn't mean to do that. Sorry, guys. Uh, Nish needs to rally these probes, but I'm not going to comment on that. So we see more gateways being built. He's definitely going gateway heavy in this composition, not focusing too much on the immortals, even though it's really what he should be building more of. See his confrontation down here. I try not to miss any confrontations. Archons, uh, zealots, immortals, and stalkers are a very, very diverse composition for the Protoss. It can actually do a lot of damage if he lands proper storms, but I don't think he has any high Templar in here. So no storms can be landed on this marine army, which is unfortunate. Uh, he may just have to back up and let him uh, amass some energy on some high templars. If he decides that's the direction he's going to go, I don't see any high templars in production right now. Uh, this army is going to go up. Actually, this army can do some decent harassment on the third if they can sneak around the back here. Uh, maybe that's what the Protoss is planning. I'm not 100% sure. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, a little bit more mining going on from the fourth base there. This Protoss army is going to go join up with the rest of its... Uh, but he's no forward pylon planted by the Protoss. A little bit surprising on that one. He could uh, use it for very, very fast reinforcements. I really, really want to see some more Immortals out of the Protoss player. Uh, he does, seems to be preferring the Heavy Blink Stalker play. Uh, the Stalkers are 2-2, going on 3-2, I do believe. Yet, uh, Weapons Level 3 is coming down right now. Uh, I would really like to see another Forge, maybe. I don't see one Forge. I'm only seeing one Forge. One Forge and a forward pylon uh, were lacking which is unfortunate, but uh, again, I'm not here to rag on them. They do have quite high money, and again, they have reached a point in the game where it's really, really hard to spend all the money you're getting, so uh, expand like crazy. If I were these players, I would probably take an additional two bases apiece and just uh, maybe not pump a whole lot more probes, but at least that ensures that your economy can remain intact if the enemy finds one of your bases that, uh, and destroys it accordingly. So we had a bit of a lull here after that uh, huge win by the Protoss in that first big engagement, but the Protoss is now moving down. 
Terran is again 200, 200, supply blocked, or supply capped, I guess I should say, but the Protoss is moving up the side ramp to hopefully pick off some of these barracks and some of the tech structures of the Terran. Uh, these charged zealots actually are very, very good at initiating contact with the armies. And there's actually the big engagement tank sieging up. Gonna fire on these zealots from afar, and we force the Protoss to retreat back down. Hmm. Terran's upgrades. Check out Terran's bio upgrades. Our bio upgrades are 1 1, mech upgrades are 1 0, and he's going to have to rebuild these barracks to make sure he can replenish his, uh, the marine side of his army very quickly. See another uh, commence that are going down here and probably expanding right about here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I called that. Uh, neither person, the players decided to get control of these Elnaga watchtowers, although they do seem to be in direct contact very often, so maybe they don't feel the need to see exactly whether others. Army is mobilizing because they can use their own army to do that. Although I'd still like to see these Elnaga towers taken control of. They are quite vital in this map as I'm starting to notice. I'm going to pick off these backdoor rocks here but these tanks. Maybe can just siege up on the high ground and pick them off. But no, the army is going to go around the side and siege up at a far. Uh, not a great place for those tanks to siege up actually, truth be told. And they're just going to attack this planetary fortress and the master pair was a fail. It cannot save the planetary fortress against this whole mass army from the Protoss. And the Terran's got a tough position here. He's got to move those tanks, uh, unsiege them to move them. He's got to siege them up back up quick in reaction to what the Protoss is going to move to, and the Protoss is going to move around. He might have spotted this fourth base, I think. Uh, maybe he didn't, actually. He might just decide to circumvent those rocks and go about his merry way. But he's going to run right into the Terran army here. And these guys are not on A move, these guys are just on move command, and that lost the Protoss some forces. If he can catch these tanks before they siege up too quickly, though, he can do some massive damage. And here is where he's really lacking the storms, and that Protoss army basically just got cleaned up by the Terran. Uh, he really needed some High Templar and some Storms in there to take care of the mass marine composition. As we see a whole bunch of High Templar being warped in here, that is a lot of High Templar, and that will be a lot, a lot of Storms, as is seen right there by one of the spectators of this particular match. Uh, Natural's mind out he should transfer those probes over to one of the few two mining bases he has left. Uh, Protoss sitting on Facebook money right here, and this is ridiculous. Uh, we just see armor level 3 coming down here, vehicle weapons and ship weapons level Two infantry weapons level two coming down, but here comes the pro or the Terran army. These uh, Templar do have enough for storms, and these tanks are going to siege up and blast away at the Templar from a distance. Who obviously do not have a lot of health, and there goes mad storms, and they were not very effective at landing. That was a waste of some storms here, but hopefully still got some more. He crushes the force coming around the back, but this Terran army is just going to come around the back, and there's some more storms coming down. Huge, huge, huge storms coming down, but there's a ton of medevacs here that can heal those up right away. And these Templar are going to fall very, very quickly. Uh, that is a shame. Those Templar were a very, very good idea, but he had too many medevacs. Uh, really, really needed some more stalkers out here to deal with that, the medevac count of the Terran army. Uh, we do see that the Terran army is basically in here picking away at production facilities. I don't know if there's a way the Protoss can get back in this game. He's not too far behind in supply. He's going to warp in nine zealots on the high ground here. Uh, actually, that's not a bad idea. If he can bear a charge left, so he can rush in here and maybe wipe out this force, he might still have a chance in this game. Uh, he is sitting on very high money, obviously, and he still has two mining bases. And Terran's not doing a great job of prioritizing what he's hitting. And there goes the Zealots into there, charging into the line. And there's a little bit of micro going off from the Terran there, and he's picking up some units, and his Bedivac's trying to save them. And those nine Zealots were crushed very, very quickly. And now we're going to see some stalkers being made to try and take out those Medvacs. Uh, hopefully the tanks don't siege up and blast away from them from afar, because uh, stalkers get horrendously massacred by tanks, as they get horrendously massacred by a Terran army in general. We just see these tanks and Marines and Medivacs and SCVs who are here for repair, I'm assuming, blasting away at the limited Protoss forces available. These probes are just chilling, chilling here, and they're going to go around and try and get this around. Uh, nope, they're actually going to try and leave the base, and actually they will succeed in the max exodus that is occurring right there. But this Terran army successfully taken out the natural, and they can move right up into the main and start attacking tech facilities, uh, provided that these units are unable to hold this off, and I don't think this is going to be enough to hold it off. Uh, Downey is in a world of hurt here. Because the Terran can just keep amassing forces behind this while he's basically running his main army through, decimating everything the Protoss has to build units from. Uh, I do believe this might be GG, as I don't like to call it prematurely before they do, but I do believe that this might be one of those moments where the, you can definitely say the game is over. Uh, Proto or Terran still continue to rip through this, but Protoss is still mining from this base. He has some probes unrallied, but Terran has killed almost all of his... Uh, or he's in the process of killing almost all of his gateways, and I just don't see a way for the... Protoss player to get out of this tank sieged up here. Uh, Observer making sure he's fully aware that those tanks are sieged up, but this is just an absolute massacre. Uh, I think the GG needs to be called right here. Uh, I apologize for maybe trying to call that myself and not letting the player do it himself, but this is definitely uh, one of those. Oh, a couple storms being landed there, a couple huge storms being landed there, but 
definitely a little bit too little too late. Uh, Downey's now officially half the supply, merging a couple of Archons, trying to do some last ditch uh, effort to save his base, but his base is pretty much gone as it is. I don't see what he can do to save his base. Uh, I guess we're going to watch this final engagement here. The Archons basically get taken right out by the tanks, and there's the GG. Obviously, these two people are familiar with each other because this was not a ladder match, and he called a mate, so that shows a little bit of good naturedness there. Uh, Protoss, or Terran was busy expanding behind this, so really, if the Protoss managed to hold it off, the Terran would have been in an immensely favorable position. So we did see a really good gold level game there, guys. Again, if you uh, if you like what we're doing, if you like what we're the idea, and you like the casting, uh, please then send in some replays or refer some of your friends to listen to us because we do appreciate any views we get and any replays we receive to cast. So that's my cast for the night. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and this has been Copa, and I will see you guys later.